The legendary origins of the submarine stretch back to 332 BC, with a tale about Alexander the Great being lowered into the sea in a glass barrel to study fish. The submarine concept was thereafter consigned to the backwaters of history for some 1800 years. It reappears with a publication in 1578 of inventions or devices by William Bourne, an English gunner turned innkeeper and mathematician. In this work, Bourne describes the principle of making a boat sink and rise again by changing the volume of the ship. If you contract the volume of the ship, it'll sink. If you expand its volume, it'll float upward. The exact process for doing this isn't made clear, and contemporary materials and techniques precluded effective experiment. The Early Pioneers of Submersible Ships A Dutchman, Cornelis Drebbel, built the first known practical submersible in 1620 using blueprints developed nearly 50 years earlier by English amateur inventor William Bourne whose plans never got beyond the drawing board. A leather-covered 12-oar rowboat, Drebbel's craft was reinforced with iron against water pressure to a depth of 15 feet. He tested the submersible in the Thames while working under contract to the British court. King James I observed the tests, although it's probably apocryphal that the monarch ever made a test dive himself. Despite several successful tests between 1620 and 1624, the Royal Navy eventually lost interest in Drebbel's invention and none was commissioned or built. During the later years of the 17th century, a number of other European inventors and scientists worked on submarine designs. In 1680, Italian inventor Giovanni Borelli sketched plans for a submarine that could be sunk or raised using goatskins in the hull that were alternately filled or emptied of water by twisting a rod. The Turtle, the first military submarine The first military submarine was Turtle, which made its debut during the American Revolution. Built in 1775 by Connecticut inventor David Bushnell, the walnut-shaped submersible measured 7 feet high and 5 and a half feet wide. Bushnell designed it to be operated by one man and capable of submerging 20 feet deep for up to half an hour. Made of oak and covered with pine tar pitch for waterproofing, Turtle looked more like a beer keg than a modern submarine. The ship dove and surfaced by means of brass pumps that took in or expelled seawater as ballast while using 700 pounds of lead weights that could be played out in 50-foot increments on a line. Following the outbreak of the American Revolution, Patriots were desperate to strike a blow at British ships blockading New York Harbor. Bushnell's Turtle was pressed into service. To sink the British ship Eagle, Turtle would need to come alongside and fasten a 150-pound bomb to Eagle's keel with a crew. Bushnell initially gave the piloting job to his brother Ezra, but Ezra's poor health led to the postponement of the plan. In the end, a sergeant in the Continental Army, Ezra Lee, was chosen for the task. On September 6, 1776, Lee set out on the mission. Unfortunately, for the Americans, he could not drill a hole in the Eagle's copper reinforced bottom, and the attack failed. The submarine takes its iconic shape. In 1801, expatriate American designer Robert Fulton, then living in France, demonstrated the copper-hulled Nautilus, the first fish-shaped submersible, which employed a screw to push rather than pull the vessel. The vessel included sails for surface propulsion and enough compressed air to keep a four-man crew underwater for three hours. In spite of successful trials on the Seine River, in Rouen and at Brest, the French Admiralty declined to invest in Fulton's new technology. In the 1850s, the Danes were at war with the German states, and the Danish Navy blockaded German ports. The Bavarian artillery engineer Wilhelm Bauer devised a plan to utilize submarines to attack the Danish ships. With public support, he built Brandtaucher. Disaster struck when the hull plate sprang the leak and the ship sank to the bottom and became embedded in mud. Bauer persuaded his men to let the water flow in equalizing the pressure inside and outside the submarine 
to enable the hatch to be opened. After six long hours underwater, the crew was able to flee its doomed vessel. Bauer didn't give up. In 1856, he built Sea-Tufel, Sea Devil, a 52-foot submarine carefully equipped with a rescue device for Russia during the Crimean War. The Arms Race of the Early 20th Century In 1889, an officer in the Spanish Navy, Don Isaac Perel, designed a more advanced submarine. Named after himself, Perel's ship was entirely powered by electricity and made of steel. Perel was capable of 10 knots on the surface and 8 knots submerged. In many respects, Perel resembled the submarines later developed during World War I. It had two torpedoes, fresh air systems, and a fully reliable underwater navigation system. Despite two years of successful tests, the hidebound Spanish Navy terminated the project, a lucky break for the United States Navy, which would go to war with the Spanish nine years later. Americans became involved in the development of the submarine during the last few years of the 19th century. Irish inventor John Philip Holland built America's best-known practical submarine, Holland. A gasoline engine powered the submarine on the surface, and a battery-driven motor did so when the vessel was submerged. Holland could fire 18-inch torpedoes from a single torpedo tube. Assistant Secretary of the Navy Theodore Roosevelt witnessed the subsea trials and recommended that the Navy buy Holland, but it wasn't until 1900 that it was formally commissioned. Six more submarines of the Holland type were ordered. Holland's company later filled orders by Great Britain, Russia, the Netherlands, and Japan. The Holland Torpedo Boat Company was the forerunner of General Dynamics, which continues to build sophisticated submarines today. Another pioneer in the development of the submarine was Simon Lake. In 1894, Lake launched the first practical submarine in the rivers of New Jersey. The following year, the Lake Submarine Company began to build the first steel submarine, Argonaut I. Lake submarines had the first bow and stern diving planes for the depth control. In 1897, he patented the even keel submarine. Lake developed the periscope and virtually eliminated the magnetic effect of metal surrounding the submarine's compass. In 1898, Argonaut completed a 1,000-mile cruise above and beneath the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. A colored engraving shows a cutaway view of Wilhelm Bauer's 1855 Brandtauger. During the early part of the 20th century, Great Britain and Germany were engaged in a naval arms race. Both sides placed emphasis on battleships and other surface ships. Nevertheless, the two countries also constructed submarines. Typical of these submarines was Germany's U-20, which would infamously sink the British liner Lusitania. U-20 displaced 650 tons running on the surface and 837 tons submerged. Two eight-cylinder diesel engines capable of 15 knots powered it on the surface and two electric motors provided up to 9 knots when submerged. U-20 carried an 88mm deck gun and seven torpedoes similar to the Whitehead torpedo developed by an English inventor of that name. The torpedoes were 12 to 16 feet long and weighed about a ton. Air-driven, they could travel up to 40 knots for the first 1,000 yards with a warhead of 290 pounds of trotile explosive. World War I – The Strategic Impact of Submarines The submarine proved its value early in World War I. On September 22, 1914, three obsolete British cruisers, Abukir, Hogue, and Cressy, were sunk by a single German submarine, U-9. Of the nearly 2,300 men aboard the cruisers, more than 1,400 were lost. U-9 sank the three cruisers with an expenditure of only six torpedoes. The most notorious victim of a submarine during World War I was the Cunard Line's Lusitania. On May 7, 1915, she was off Old Head, near Kinsale, Ireland, when she encountered U-20 with a single torpedo, the German submarine sank the liner with the loss of more than 100 American passengers. This was doubly shocking since up to that time it was believed that any ship 
traveling faster than 50 knots was immune from submarines. Lusitania was going 18 knots when she was torpedoed. A few months later, U-24 torpedoed and sank the passenger liner Arabic of the White Star Line. The Woodrow Wilson administration put pressure on Germany to refrain from sinking any more passenger liners. Germany agreed not to sink the liners unless they resisted, the so-called Arabic Pledge. The following year, however, a German submarine torpedoed and damaged a ferry boat, Sussex. Germany restated her vow not to sink passenger liners. German U-boats became larger and more powerful as the war progressed. One such example was U-53. This submarine was more than 200 feet long and carried two medium-caliber deck guns with a range that was a great deal farther than its predecessors. On October 7, 1916, U-53 surfaced on the east coast of the United States. Eventually, U-53 sank four ships off the American homeland. Since the sub was operating in international waters, the United States Navy could do nothing but protest ineffectually against the attacks. A few months later, Germany announced that it would resume unrestricted submarine warfare. Any ship, including American vessels, would be sunk if they tried to go to or from Great Britain. This ill-conceived policy brought the United States into the war on the Allied side and fatally tilted the conflict away from Germany, whose submarine warfare proved decisive for the wrong reasons. World War II Submarine Warfare When Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany, in the 1930s, he rebuilt the German Navy and ordered the construction of new U-boats to replace the 360 subs sunk or surrendered during World War I. When World War II broke out, the German submarines adopted new tactics traveling in wolf packs to attack Allied convoys. The British had reintroduced the convoy system, installing radar on their ships and using high-frequency direction finders to locate the signals of the enemy submarines. Unbeknownst to the Germans, the British broke their code, allowing the British to know when and where German submarines would strike. German submarines became larger and faster. In 1940, the Nazis developed U-300, a streamlined 550-ton vessel capable of reaching 19 knots when submerged. In July 1942, German engineers scrapped U-300 and came up with U-301. In the end, only seven subs of this type were completed, an additional two were near completion before being damaged in an Allied air raid. American submarine efforts were much more successful in World War II. A total of 314 subs served in the United States Navy, 52 were lost during the war, with 41 of the losses directly attributable to enemy attacks. A total of 3,506 American submariners were killed in the war. In return, American subs devastated Japanese shipping, sinking more enemy supply ships than all other weapons combined, including aircraft. Entering the Nuclear Age After the war, the United States and the Soviet Union raced to build better submarines during the Cold War. Out of this came the nuclear-powered submarine, which could stay submerged longer and had a much longer range than World War II-era subs. Both sides placed ballistic missiles aboard submarines. These vessels carried long-range missiles with nuclear warheads. In 1955, Nautilus became the first nuclear-powered submarine. Advances in technology, including equipment that could extract oxygen from seawater, allowed the subs to remain submerged for weeks or months at a time. Three years later, Nautilus completed the first voyage beneath the Arctic ice cap. The modern submarine is a deadly weapon. From a leather-covered 12-oar rowboat to a vessel armed with nuclear warheads capable of wiping out entire civilizations, the submarine has made great strides militarily. Perhaps da Vinci was right to fear the evil nature of men who practice assassination at the bottom of the sea.